Deuteronomy 4, 5 through 8. See, I have taught you statutes and rules as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do them in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. Keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? And what great nation is there that has statutes and rules so righteous as all this law that I set before you today? My name's Adam Terrell, and I'm here to encourage you to obey the law and think about it and speak about it constantly. I broke the law. Christ paid my debt by sacrificing himself so that I can be clean to offer myself as a living sacrifice back to God. The entire Mosaic law is obligatory for everyone Keeping some of the laws look different today because the light of further revelation supersedes shadows in the old law. The temple sacrifices are an example where we have something better. Note that we must still obey the Mosaic laws for sacrifices. There is still a temple, and priests are still required to offer sacrifices. It's just that the priests, the sacrifices, and the temple are all better now. God will show grace to those who apply the law to themselves, to those who have hidden the law in their hearts, and he will judge those who disobey accordingly. I must apply it to myself, and then those around me will see its fruit and be drawn to its goodness. Theocracy grows by the sword of the Spirit, God's word, and self-sacrifice. The law's purpose is to give a path to restoration. Christ has restored me, so I must seek to restore others by sacrificing myself. Thanks for listening. My goal with each conversation is to edify and bring the law and wisdom to bear on each person's current situation in life. Let's jump into this week's interview. Over the past semester, I've had some growth in what I think of politically. And so a lot of the stuff on your page really interests me because of um, how you deal with the law from the Bible and how it should be introduced to politics uh, in America. My view generally has been very libertarian, but I realize that those policies have a hard time working if you don't have a moral society, right? Right. So a lot of what I think of has to do with getting a revival going in America and then because of that having more libertarian politics. Right. But the stuff on your page interests me a lot as well <clears throat> because I feel like it's somewhat similar, but I – very different idea with the revival at, at, at least. Um, I, I know Paul said that um, if it had not been for the law, he would not have known his need for a savior. Right. Are you familiar with the way of the master? I am not. No, I'll have to send you a link. Um, the guy that, that um, does it, his name is Ray comfort. He will use the 10 commandments in like just talking with people that he's going to share the gospel with. So he'll ask him, Hey, can you name any of the 10 commandments or, and he'll ask him, are you a good person? And most people say, yeah, um, yeah, I'm a good person. And he said, can I ask you a few questions to, to see if that's true? And they're like, sure. Uh-huh. So he asks them, how, you know, how many lies have you told? Uh, have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Um, have you ever stolen anything? Uh, have you ever taken God's name in vain? And most of them are like, yeah, 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 yeah. And he's like, okay, so by your own admission, you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterate heart. And when you die, you're going to face God on judgment day. And is he going to say that you're innocent or guilty? And the, the responses vary. They'll either like walk away or they'll say, well, I'll, uh, I'll be guilty, but it doesn't matter. I don't care. Or they'll say, I'm innocent because God loves everybody. And then that's where the disconnect is because the people don't have a really good understanding of I'm guilty under the law. And so if most people don't understand that they're guilty, what do they need saving from? And so that's why I think the gospel is offensive to most people at this point, because they don't understand their position. Right. And so once he makes that clear to them, a lot of people are very receptive to the gospel. They don't understand their need for a savior until they understand that they're condemned. In which case, mm-hmm. if they really understand and believe that they're condemned then of course, of course, you know, it's like everybody who became a believer, of course I would accept Christ. What, why would I not do that? That would be stupid. Right. And the law is the tool 
to teach them. Um, Paul calls the law a schoolmaster to lead people to Christ and a guardian until he comes. Like, what if every single person that had been through the criminal justice system in America, which is a lot, it's like, what if every single person that goes through that had a proper understanding of what the law is and understand what the penalty is and why that penalty is that way. And uh-huh. that would give basically all of those people a perfect foundation for realizing, Hey, I'm not a good person. I do need a savior, not just in this criminal sense, but in a spiritual sense as well. Mm. I think that would be a really big key to, to a revival. I kind of wish I were back at college right now. Cause I'd like to talk to some people about this kind of stuff while I'm, it's still fresh in my mind because a lot of what you're saying is really interesting to me. And it sounds like all good ideas and witnessing tactics. Like even what was it? Um, the sermon on our Mars Hill that Paul gave, he had to basically start over when he was witnessing to Gentiles because they didn't have a foundation of creation of the Genesis account of any of that stuff. And so he had to right. basically start from the very beginning because you can't just say Jesus loves you because they're like, what, what are you talking about? I have no idea where to put this, but uh, Jesus, all of his stuff makes sense to us because he was talking to Jews. They had an understanding of the old Testament and where they came from. And then he left it up to the disciples to go and teach everything whatsoever I have commanded, which, and that includes the old Testament as well. I've seen, um, in witnessing a lot, especially throughout teenage years, when I would do door to door with my youth group, it often be very difficult to convince people that they needed a savior because they didn't have a foundation in any of the law or any of the old Testament, just because of how out of mainstream, uh, Christian theology is now. Everybody knows the old Testament's there, but I think a lot of people are just embarrassed by it. And I think that's a shame. One of the purposes of the law was that we would be seen as wise among the nations. Mm Mm-hmm. In my view, we've thrown away that wisdom saying that it's foolishness. And then everybody looks at Christians like they're idiots. I realized when I saw your page and it was kind of controversial to me at first, but then I realized I'm in college to learn a lot and to shape how I believe, right? So why not take an extra opportunity to learn some stuff and possibly shape how I believe? And I appreciate the opportunity to be on the show.